Today we're going to learn a different type of Mendelian cross. Up until this point, we've been studying genetic crosses and pun and squares that only deal with one specific trait. Today we're going to look at something called a dihybrid cross. A dihybrid cross studies two traits being passed on within the same pun and square. And that's what we're going to be looking at today. Just like you would start with a normal Punnett square, we highly recommend that you give yourself a key to work with before you start out with your dihybrid cross. The trait that we're going to study today um, are in the pea plant, and the first trait we're going to study is plant height, with tall being dominant to short. So if you take a look in the top left-hand corner, right up here, I've laid out a key for our first trait that we're looking at, plant height. The next trait that we're looking at is plant flower color, and like we learned earlier, purple is dominant to white. So I'm going to set up a key to represent uh, the purple and the white genotypes and phenotypes. You can see in the right hand corner that I've included a key for the plant flower color genotypes and phenotypes. Now this will make it much easier when we're starting our cross and we're taking a look at our Punnett square. So please make sure that you do this with all of your dihybrid crosses as well as your single monohybrid crosses. Okay, so step one, after we've designed ourselves a key, is going to be to cross and figure out what our parents are. So the problem tells us that we're crossing two heterozygous um, plants. And they're heterozygous for both traits meaning they're heterozygous for purple and they're heterozygous for the tall trait. So once we know that, we're going to set up our cross. So the way that we write our parents, you can see uh, we've placed it right here, would be two hybrids for both traits. Now notice, we keep the traits together, so T's stay with T's, and um, the letter P's will stay with the letter P's. So we have a hybrid tall and a hybrid purple for both of our parents. Now we're gonna move on to step two. In step two, we are going to take a look at the possible combination of alleles that each parent can pass on. Now there's a method we like to use and you may or may not have heard this in math course before, but the method we're going to use to figure out the traits is called FOIL. And FOIL stands for first, outer, inner, and last. And that's how we're going to pair up each of the parents' alleles. So if we take a look at our first parent uh, in the cross, we're going to start off with the first set of their alleles they could pass on. And I'll represent that in a red coloration. So the first set they can pass on would be capital T and a capital P. The next possible pair of alleles they could pass on comes from the outer pairing. And outer would be this right here, represented in blue. The next possible pair of alleles they could pass on would be capital T and a lowercase p. The third possible pair of alleles comes from the way we would pair them uh, through the I in FOIL, which stands for inner. And the inner ones would be these two right here. Sorry. These two uh, in the very center. Okay, so that would produce a lowercase t and a capital P. And then the very last way the alleles could pair would be uh, the last alleles. And the last alleles would be represented by this right here. So it would be a lowercase t and a lowercase p. So you can see that the allele pairing for parent number one is complete. Again, we're using the FOIL method. So we're going to do the same exact thing. Um, for our second parent, and the nice thing about parent number two is that 
It will also have the same exact uh, pairing of alleles that you see here because it has the same exact genotype. Again, we'll use the FOIL method and uh, kind of go over how we got our first pairing. So again, we start off with the F in FOIL, which stands for first. So the first pairing we could get is capital T, capital P. The next pairing we could get comes from the outer alleles, which would be capital T and lowercase p. The third pairing of alleles would be from the inner ones, uh, the inner ones, so it would be these two right here, which would be lowercase t and capital P. And then the last pairing of alleles, which is what the L stands for over here, would come from the very last possible pairing, which would be lowercase t and lowercase p. So we've completed step two, and now what we have in each is the possibilities of the alleles each pair pass on for both the plant height, so either tall or short, and the plant flower color, either purple or white. The next thing we have to do in step three is take each allele combination and we're going to place it at the top of the Punnett square for parent one and the side of our Punnett square for parent two, as if we were doing uh, a single trait cross. So if you take a look um, at the first parents allele combinations, I've taken what I've placed up top here from the alleles pairings in step two. Now I'm going to do the same thing for parent two on the left side of the Punnett square. So if you take a look at the second side of our Punnett square, I've taken the possible allele combinations for parent two, which is the same as parent one, and I've plugged them onto the left side of the equation. So now we're ready um, to complete our Punnett square cross, and the same rules apply as they would in a monohybrid or just a single trait cross, but there is one new thing you have to keep in mind, as you are dragging down the alleles into each box, you do need to keep the like traits together. So I said it earlier, the T's should stay with letter T's and the P's should stay with the letter P's um, within the cross. So if you take a look at our first box, I'm going to bring down capital T, capital T, capital P, capital P. You can see that I've kept my like traits together. Now I'm going to continue that for all of the rest of those 15 boxes. So you can see I've completed row one. And again, we're doing the same exact thing that we would do in a regular Punnett square. So the alleles are simply just coming down and going across and they're meeting in the box. And the only thing again you have to remember T's pair with T's and the letter P's have to pair with the letter P's. So I'm going to continue that for the rest of the boxes. So after filling in all of our Punnett square boxes, we now have a, a lot of genotypes and phenotypes for both of the traits. Step four is going to be to report all of our genotypes and phenotypes, but before we do that, we're going to have to go through our box and we're going to use a symbol just to kind of lie out and take a look at the combination of alleles that we have um, and take the genotypes and actually match them up with their appropriate phenotype. So we'll start off with tall and purple. Based on the key that we uh, had placed up here when we first started, you can see that there's many possible ways that some uh, plant would be tall or purple. So I'm going to use uh, the color blue to represent um, any tall and purple plant that I see, and I'm going to use a circle uh, with the color blue and just kind of put a mark in the box where plants are purple, uh, tall, and purple. So there's a tall and purple one. This one would be tall and purple. Okay, 
So you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 out of the 16 have the tall and the purple phenotype. The next one we're going to take a look at is tall and white. So rather than looking for capital uh, P's and hybrids, we're going to look for just um, lowercase p's along with the tall trait. So I'm going to use the color red, and I'm going to use a star to put in any box that I see tall and white. You can see that these are tall and white um, because they have the allele combination for tall, and then two lowercase p's would be white. So there's three out of 16 that are tall and white. The next one I'm looking for is going to be short and purple. So this time around, I'm looking for the lowercase uh, alleles, two lowercase t's with a purple trait. So I'm going to use a triangle to represent these ones. There's a short purple, here's a short purple, and there's another short purple one. So three out of 16 are short and purple. And then the very last box, I'm going to use green, and we're looking for short and white. And the only one that we have here I will use um, a square to represent this one. There is one out of 16 boxes that are short and white. So this is how you do a dihybrid cross. Feel free to rewatch the video, pause it as you are taking your notes, and then you can move on to the next example um, and using this one to guide yourself through the next example as well.